I think this is going to be a good one. On this episode of Throwdown, we're piling up that craveable comfort food for the non-carnivorous vegetable lasagna. That's how we roll. Carla and Christine Pallotta are the pride of Boston's North End. You might see Paul Revere. You might see Paul Revere. I don't think we're funny at all. And you can taste the garden in every bite of their veggie lasagna. Are we a success yet? <laughs> I know, right? But I'm pretty picky when it comes to these layers of love. I wouldn't make lasagna any other way. So I'm heading to Beantown to challenge them. You really are so much cuter in person, let me oh, tell you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> will my veggie lasagna take off at this bake-off? What? <laughs> or will I lose more than a throwdown? You could be on food TV. Uh, I didn't want to right. say it, but hey, no. <laughs> I didn't want you to get scared of losing your job. <laughs> my name is Bobby Flay. My mission, to find the best of the best. My objective, perfecting their signature dish. The plan of attack, I'm showing up to challenge them, but they don't know it. I may win, I might even lose. It's anybody's game. It's the ultimate throwdown. All right, let's see what the next throwdown is. It's confidential. Lasagna, vegetable lasagna. Carla and Christine Pallotta of Nebo in Boston, Massachusetts. What? Go ahead. No, what? Go ahead. No, you just said no. Oh, okay. After running a successful hair salon for decades, Carla and Christine Pallotta closed their salon doors permanently to start a restaurant, something they knew nothing about. Actually, Christine didn't know how to boil water until she was 30 years old. That was a question she asked my mother, how do I boil water? And now, they're on Throwdown. We want people to know what our food's about. We want people to know what our neighborhood's about. Carla and Christine claim to have the best Italian food in Boston's North End, and the accolades are piling up. One dish that goes above all others is their top requested vegetable lasagna. Sometimes we put things on the menu and we say, maybe we shouldn't put it on, it's too simple. People won't appreciate it and it ends up being our biggest seller. Carla and Christine think they're being featured in a Food Network special called Little Italy, Big Eats. All right, Food Network, come on out to Nebo. We'll show you around. You may think you know about Italian food, but things are done a little differently in Boston's North End. You're gonna need more than just your training to go against years of Italian family tradition. Layer it or lose it. We were hairdressers, we had a salon for 23 years, and um, I uh, got bored one day. And I said to Carla, I was opening up a restaurant. And she thought I lost my mind. We have no background at all in this industry. But for Carla and Christine, it really wasn't such a tough transition. Business is business. Numbers and numbers, customer service is customer service. How's this, good? The only thing we didn't know how to do was actually cook. <laughs> but growing up in an Italian household in Boston's North End covered up for a lack of culinary chops. The oh. sisters convinced their mom to pass down her recipes for the restaurant, but that wasn't as easy as it sounds. There was never measurements. We tried to write all her recipes down one day and um, could not give you any measurements. And she didn't understand why you needed measurements. She's a very, you touch, you feel, you see. But once they got the menu straight, Nebo, which is short for North End Boston, was born. We thought it was gonna be a little pizza shop. And uh, we ended up with a full menu, full liquor license. Just Kept on expanding. Very proud of them. They did a great job. They had their father's backbone. I gotta give you credit for the food, but it wouldn't have happened without them. He gave exactly. us the nerve. The girl's father, Jimmy, passed away in 2010, but they keep his memory alive all over the North End. We're heading down to the club where my father used to come every morning and come down, see his friends. Hey, Jerry. Jerry. These guys appreciate the real old-fashioned recipes that we do. That's the Italian way, the old dishes. Our favorite things about having our restaurant located in the North End is walking to all the purveyors that my mother went to and my grandmother went to. It's a very comforting feeling. You can taste this sense of place in Nebo's food. We got the idea of vegetable lasagna because of just having those ingredients in the garden all the time and my mother bringing it into the house. It's one of the lightest dishes that we make. I can taste all the different flavors in it. Nothing's weighing down, nothing's soaked in oil. It's just clean and simple and fresh. That was good. <laughs> the Pallotta sisters have been waiting patiently for this moment to arrive. My truth is, I told her five years ago I was gonna be on the Food Network, though. So. And so they will, just not the show they had in mind. And that's, that's a wrap. wrap.
To get some tips from my veggie lasagna, I meet up with an expert, Sal Santamaro, third generation proprietor of De Paolo's, a little Italy institution. Now I want a full flavored lasagna, perfectly layered, where you're not gonna actually miss the meat that's missing. <laughs> you don't need the meat to have a great lasagna. Right. Herbs alone will make the difference. Definitely your basil stands out. Fresh rosemary, sage, but don't put a lot of one. Right. Just a hint. So some people don't use pasta to make lasagna, like they'll just use the vegetables, right? Yes, you could do that. I have to be honest, I think I'd miss the pasta. You and me both. I okay. love I love the pasta. Yeah. I, in my place, we use the dry dry lasagna. Okay. We, we find it to have a better texture uh -huh. that catches the sauce. Okay, perfect. What about cheeses? One of the cheeses that we use Ricotta. is our fresh handmade ricotta. And then our fresh mozzarella. We grate it in. And if you're from the north, we use parmigiano or Something drier and saltier. That's right. So we're gonna do some vegetables. I was thinking along the lines of just doing like full-on mushrooms. Make a, you know, a delicious full-flavored wild mushroom lasagna. What do you think about that? I wouldn't just do mushrooms. The beauty of lasagna, it comes in layers. As you bite into it, you take each component and you taste so many flavors. So you mouth. would add other vegetables in there as well? Yes, I would. Sal, thank you so much for taking your thank time you. out of your busy store, the Palos, and uh, we'll come down and see you soon. This was a treat for me. Well, I'm sure there's people lined up down the block, so you better get back there. Coming up, the sisters play nice for the cameras. Can you move that over there so I can chop some parsley? Don't be nice to me because we're on TV. No. <laughs> then again, they've had a lot of time to practice. I waited 20 years for this. Where have you been? <laughs> Wanna... Hi, I'm Carla Pallotta. And I'm her sister, Christine Pallotta. And we're going to show you how simple it is to actually make your own homemade regatta. Put in a gallon of milk. Add a little white vinegar. The acid in the vinegar helps to form the curds. And what happens is it's, you'll see the liquid and the solid separate, and then we'll strain it and put it in a bowl. While the sisters separate the curds from the whey, I'm on my way to test my recipe for vegetable lasagna. These are my two trusty assistants, very helpful, Stephanie and Miriam, as you all know. If we're gonna do a vegetable lasagna, like the first thing I think of that's gonna replace meat is something like mushrooms, something that's earthy, something that has sort of a meaty texture to it. Our vegetable lasagna will feature mushrooms and butternut squash, and to keep the meatless name going, a marinara sauce. I'm going to start making the tomato sauce. Christina, how do you start your marinara? We like to use some San Manzano tomatoes, and we're just going to give the sauce, the San Manzano tomato, a quick blend. This is a very simple sauce. Basically, it's onions and garlic. We're going to let it sweat for a little while. Then we're going to add some of the crushed tomatoes over it, let that cook, and then we'll add some basil and some herbs and salt and pepper. We just use onions in our marinara sauce. We don't use any garlic, salt, black pepper, and some basil. You want to be able to taste the tomatoes. While the marinara simmers, Stephanie makes our lasagna's other sauce, a cream and flour-based Mornay, the bechamel's cousin. The bechamel is a cream sauce, and then when you add cheese to it, it becomes a Mornay sauce. We're going to use Fantina. It's a little more nutty. Now we're going to move over to the star of the show, which is going to be the zucchini. You don't want it too thin because you're frying it, and it'll get too soft and it'll break up. About a third of an inch of thickness. We're filling our lasagna with all types of mushrooms. Portobellos, creminis, shiitakes, and porcini. Now you need a lot of mushrooms to get a little mushrooms. They really melt down. So we dip our zucchini in flour, egg, Romano cheese, salt, and some black pepper. Very simple ingredients. To keep our mushrooms company, we roast some butternut squash seasoned with thyme and a little honey. If you put raw vegetables in a lasagna like this, like all the water all the would juice, be yeah. in there. So you need to like get rid of all the liquid. And you'll know it's done when you see a crisp golden brown color. And let that cool and move on to our um, about about the filling. We have some fresh ricotta coffee. cheese here, an egg, and some uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, parsley, and some fresh thyme. And we're just gonna fold this all together. Eggs, Romano cheese, salt, black pepper, and the regatta that we just made. Okay, we're good to go. So we start with just a very, very light layer of sauce at the bottom. We're gonna take a little bit of our Fontina sauce, and then we're gonna take a little bit of our tomato sauce. I know some people like to do sort of faux lasagnas where they use something else to take the place of the noodle, but to me, if you're gonna make lasagna, you gotta have pasta. Fresh finished pasta. Beautiful. You just wanna blanch it until it's pliable, really. We would prefer having a vegetable lasagna versus a noodle lasagna all the time. It's yeah, just the a change. Nice. It's much lighter. And I like to overlap my zucchini so that when you cut into it, 
It doesn't just all completely fall apart. Every layer is going to be zucchini, then your marinara sauce, Christine, and then fresh mozzarella. Then we're going to add a little bit of the uh, ricotta, then mushrooms, squash. Remember, you always want to get the edges. I'm going to cover this up. I'm going to put this in the oven. 350. So the final layer on this is going to be mozzarella cheese. And then we're going to cover it with tin foil when we first put it in the oven. Toothpicks. And we put this just so the cheese doesn't stick to a tin foil. Gorgeous. <gasps> now, the key here is you need to let this rest for probably close to a half an hour. If you cut it now, it would just sort of slide all over the place. It's been sitting here for a little while. It's cut into it. It's gooey. It smells great. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Look at the layers. I want it to be more mushroomy. I want it to taste like a mushroom lasagna. I think it tastes like a lasagna with mushrooms in it. I think this is the best one we've ever done, and I think it's the best one you'll ever have. I have an idea. You do. How about if we make the bechamel with roasted cauliflower in it? <gasps> and puree it, and then forget the uh, squash. Good, because I feel like it adds nothing. Cauliflower and mushroom lasagna. That sounds pretty good. All right, Food Network, here it is. From our kitchen to yours, the Pilata family specialty. Vegetable lasagna made with zucchini. All right, Carl and Christine, I'm coming with a delicious vegetable lasagna and cameras, so say cheese. Carla and Christine Pilata give the crowd diction lessons to start their vegetable lasagna party at Umbria Prime in Boston. You say, Ricotta? <laughs> but can we get them to say throw down when we walk in with our camera-ready lasagna? We've, uh, we've made a few changes since the test kitchen. The idea of infusing cauliflower into the bechamel sauce and then pureeing it to give it even more flavor is genius. I think this is going to be a good one. Well, they're beautiful. Thank you.